Directed by Pablo Larraín, El Conde starring Marcelo Alonso, Alfredo Castro and Daniel Contessi in the lead roles is finally out on Netflix. As the satirical comedy releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to give you an overview, talk about the ending and discuss some hidden details of the film so that you can have the best viewing experience. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the film, but if you are done watching it already, let's dive straight into the video. And yeah, while you are at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, it helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on to the basic plot. Augusto Pinochet finds out during the French Revolution that he's a vampire. The revolutionaries grow on him and Marie Antoinette wins his love. He spends his entire life seeking out opportunities to quell the flames of revolution. Eventually, he travels to Chile after faking his death and taking the severed head of the queen. He overthrew the government to install his own dictatorial rule, wreaking havoc on the nation for 17 years until he was toppled. He again fakes his death and resides in a remote mansion with his wife Lucia and butler Fyodor, the two of whom have been having an affair for some time. Pinochet wants to pass away because he has lost interest in living and leaves his property to his wife Lucia, his butler Fyodor and his kids Luciana, Mercedes, Jacinta, Annabelle and Manuel. The characters talk a lot about property disputes and the narrator embellishes a few historical facts but those things are pretty self-explanatory. El Conde intends to assess the property he has available, distribute it to those who are close to him and then pass away. The task is assigned to the exorcist Carmen Sita. She seems to be looking through the Pinochet family as an accountant, but she is actually getting ready to kill the Count. But as she begins questioning Fyodo and every member of the family, she makes it abundantly clear that she does intend to cast the devil out of Augusto's body. There are thus a number of things happening, Augusto's violent past is unknown to the children. It is obvious that they are gaining financially from the atrocities that he has inflicted on his own people. They actually believe though that Augusto is incapable of killing a fly and that anything he has done so far has been motivated by some sort of compulsion. The family accepts that Carmen Sita must exorcise Augusto in order to allow him to die, even though they are aware of his vampirism, which is contradictory because how can one be a vampire without harming others? In addition to this, there is the religious perspective, because the cross is the iconic character's greatest flaw, it is a subject that is covered in every vampire movie. It has been mocked in numerous contemporary movies because it is as absurd as vampires. El Conde doesn't begin on that note because Carmen Sita is portrayed as a formidable foe whose result to perform the exorcism won't waver. She never veers from the numbers and facts, nothing irks her at all because Fyodor is actually terrifying, she only displays a silver of emotion while conducting the interview. The fact that she draws all of her strength from the all-powerful is perhaps most important. That being said, just like in every other vampire film, it won't be long before she yields to the temptation and defies her pure soul. Halfway through the film, it becomes obvious that Augusto is drawn to Carmen Sita rather than Lucia and isn't in love with Lucia anymore. On his treadmill, he begins walking out. He goes to the hut where Carmen Sita is staying and asks for her permission to enter. So it confirms the long-held belief that vampires cannot enter a location unless they have been invited by the host. Augusto does so, but he makes a fool out of himself by tripping over his own feet and declining the invitation. Strangely, Carmen Sita does not even assist him in rising and the Count only sees the door shut in his face. We also learn that Augusto supports fascism, although he is no longer in power, if someone has ever been a fascist, they will remain so throughout their entire life. Anyhow, Augusto acknowledges his weakness, just so you know, this is the guy who wants to die but now he wants to regain his strength because he is in love with Carmen Sita. He therefore makes an attempt to turn the frozen hearts in the freezer into a smoothie. They fall short in their attempts though, as a result he goes hunting. Most likely the point of the entire sequence is to suggest that Chile is still haunted by the vampire spirit of Augusto. Augusto preys on elderly women and blue collar workers that implies that fascist ideologies will continue to harm society's weakest segments even after a fascist has passed away. In reality, it was Fyodor who went out and literally stole all the heart in order to terrorize Augusto's children into coming to kill him, despite the fact that it was pretty obvious to begin with. Augusto can't kill Fyodor because he turned him into a vampire is the time-tasted master apprentice principle. There is a hierarchy problem, so even though Fyodor is in a relationship with Lucia, she can't let Augusto have her. I'm not sure if this is simply working on a thematic level to demonstrate that even though Augusto is a literal vampire, his children are the real vampires because they are surviving off of his wealth. 
back to the relationship between Augusto and Kamesita. Kamesita makes a half hazard attempt to exercise Augusto, but Augusto prevails and transforms Kamesita into a vampire. As was already mentioned, the movie gives Kamen Sita the impression that she has the upper hand because she believes in God. When it matters most though, she simply keeps. Two flight sequences, Kamen Sita's first taste of freedom and Mage Thatcher's arrival to reclaim her son Augusto mark the start of Elkonde's final act. Yes, the film hinted at the former UK Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. She's a vampire and is also Augusto's mother. She was sexually assaulted by a sailor who later turned out to be a vampire while she was employed in the French vineyards. She gave birth to Augusto, abandoned him at an orphanage and later rose to the fame as the Iron Lady of the UK. It's a satire in which the makers are trying to make fun of Thatcher's alliance with Pinochet. In reality, Thatcher did support Pinochet's heinous actions because conservatives always stood up for conservatives no matter the time or circumstance. However, as all of this is happening, Augusto's children decide to murder Carmen Sita because they suspect that she is there to steal the money they need. Lucia is finally bitten by Fyodor who transforms her into a vampire so she can assassinate Augusto. I suppose that in the climax of El Conde, Carmen Sita attempts to murder Augusto during a fictitious wedding ceremony. However, she abandons the mission and makes an attempt to flee while still in possession of all the necessary paperwork to completely bankrupt the Pinochet family. Fyodor, however, follows her and kills her. Augusto murders Lucia because she intends to kill both Augusto and Margaret. Fyodor is also killed by Augusto for betraying him by working with Lucia to kill him. Neither the money nor the opportunity to kill anyone are given to the kids. To make some money, they are compelled to sell some of the household goods. Once the Pinochet home has been cleared out, the church that has sent Carmen Sita will take ownership. While raising money by reselling Napoleon's letters, Darwin's journals and the first edition of Mein Kampf, Augusto and Margaret consume vampire blood to rejuvenate themselves. In an effort to exterminate the leftists who are receiving an education there, Augusto transforms himself into a 15-year-old boy and enters a school. Returning to my earlier point, it is possible that El Conde serves as a warning about the resurgence of fascism in contemporary society and the urgency of putting an end to it as soon as possible. Historical records of what occurred at the same time show that countries suffered as a result and the strange thing about people is that occasionally they overlook their own history, fail to see connections between the past and the present and again trust someone who is a fascist. Having said that, none of what I'm saying is presented in the movie in an understandable way. It's very uninteresting, unoriginal and rambling. If the themes were presented in a more prominent way, it might have been a fantastic watch. I'm not sure where things went wrong. If you want to give it a shot, head over to Netflix, watch El Conde, form your own opinions and let us know what you think. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching El Conde or The Count on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema series. See you at the next one and for the timing we are signing off. Adios and I'll be back.